When children show challenging behaviors, one of the first things to suffer is their relationships with the adults around them. We as grown-ups start to think, what's wrong with her? Or why is he doing this to me? And we feel frustrated, confused, or defensive. We may start correcting them, reteaching them the right thing to do, or questioning why they're acting up. And because of the way young brains process their world, they can react by thinking, I'm a bad kid, or no one cares about me, leading to feelings of worry, sadness, and sometimes challenging behaviors. Occasionally, as adults, we lean into things like punishment, lectures, or even systems of rewards to change these behaviors. But research on neurobiology and attachment tells us one thing very clearly. The first thing children need in moments like this is to feel seen, heard, and unconditionally loved. You might be thinking, I see and hear this child all the time, and I certainly love them. Isn't that enough? Great question. What matters most is how the child sees it, and their brains equate love with attention and positive regard. If they see that they're stressing you out, or if they don't get enough positive feedback from you, your love for them can fail to be seen. Now you might be thinking, but if they're acting up, how can I show them unconditional love? I have to draw the line. Another good question. Remember, unconditional love doesn't mean you don't have boundaries. It means that you still love and accept them for who they are, despite what they do. It means that you understand that their behaviors are probably because they're overwhelmed and don't have the capacity to cope with the situation. Not that they're intentionally acting up or being bad. And even if you have to set a limit, they know you still believe in their goodness and nothing can change that. But how do you strengthen your relationship with a child who is pushing your buttons or challenging your patience? Spending quality time with them may feel like a difficult thing to do. Today, we will teach you a strategy that only takes five minutes and allows you and the child to engage in positive, enjoyable time together. Plus, this time gives their brains and their spirit exactly what they need. The key is to be intentional, consistent, and predictable. Follow these first steps. One, set aside five minutes a day to engage in child-directed play or conversation. This is called us time. Two, schedule us time for the same time every day so the child knows when to expect it. Three, nothing should interfere with us time. Even if the child has engaged in behaviors you don't like, they should receive this time with you unconditionally, meaning it doesn't have to be earned and nothing can take it away. Four, introduce us time to the child in advance letting them know why you want to spend time with them every day like this. This can sound something like, I love spending time with you, and I was thinking that we could plan to play together at the same time every day. I'll make sure to put away all my distractions, and we will have five minutes of playtime just for us. How does that sound? Now, depending on the child's age and interests, you can spend those five minutes either playing or talking, if the child is younger and mostly enjoys playing, let them choose between a few interactive toys like people, animals, or blocks. Avoid things like watching the iPad, coloring, and so forth. If the child is older and mostly enjoys talking, your job is to present some fun questions for them to answer. Remember, this is not the time to try to teach the child something. This is the time that they get a break from being redirected by adults and to receive your unconditional positive regard. Here are some do's and don'ts for successful us time. Put aside other distractions to make sure you can be completely focused on the child. Let the child take the lead and keep it light. Imitate and narrate their play. Reflect and validate their words. And lastly, be genuine and have fun. Don't ask questions, 
except for the initial question in the us time conversation don't give advice or suggestions don't take over the player conversation with your ideas and don't redirect or criticize now watch as this mom does us time through play so we're going to do us time so you get to pick a toy pick a toy that you're going to play with legos legos okay You're know, stacking the blocks. That's pretty cool. Well, if you put this one out, putting it right there, it won't break. That's what you have to do. That's right. You're really good at stacking the blocks. Look at what you're building. That's going to be a pretty big Lego stand. So you put the green Lego on top of the red Lego to balance it out. Wow, you've been so patient today. They can hang down here, up here when it's sunny. Well, they have to stay on there here because it's raining. Because it's raining, so the red police and the white police, they're gonna hang out underneath because it's raining and so they can stay dry. It's pretty cool. You're being so innovative today, Killian. So I think us time is over and we'll do this again tomorrow, okay? Notice how she followed along and acted like a commentator for her son's play, repeating everything her son did and said. For children, this type of imitation is the highest form of flattery. It makes them feel seen, heard, and loved. Now watch as this teacher does us time through conversation. Let's pick a question. Okay. I'll do this one. Okay. So if you had a time machine that could only work once, what point in the past or future would you visit? I would visit my college graduation. Okay, that's very interesting. Why that time period? Because I want to see what trajectory my life is on and kind of just see like what I've accomplished and what I still have to do. That's a cool idea. What do you think you feel in that moment? Hopefully happy, but I think I'll be scared because like college is still kind of really early in your life. So like, you're kind of, I, in my opinion, I feel like you actually become an adult after you graduate college, like you're actually on your own. That makes sense. Tell me a little more about that. We still have some more time. Let's pick another question. All right, would you rather never be able to hear anything or never be able to touch anything? Here, I need to be able to touch things. <laughs> you said that so quickly. Okay, so you wanna be able to touch things. Cause like, how would I even get ready? I don't know how, like, well, would I wear like gloves to touch things or just like in general? Um, I think in general. So you want to be able to touch, you feel like the, your sense of, of touch and being able to do things is, is more important than being able to hear? Yeah. What do you think your second greatest sense would be? My vision. Vision? I need to be able to see. If I can't see, like there's really, like I don't know how I would do anything. Like the, from the moment I wake up, my day is based off of like what I can see. So I would have to switch everything around. That was a really thoughtful answer. Notice how she reflected back what the student was saying and kept inquiring further with a humble, enthusiastic, and curious tone, like she wanted to absorb and learn everything she could from her. Now, let's talk through some common questions that come up. Only five minutes? Won't they protest when it has to end? They might in the beginning, but if you are consistent, they will quickly come to trust that they will get your attention every day without question. Simply say, us time is over for today, but we will get to do it again at the same time tomorrow. Do I have to do it forever? No. Do it consistently for two weeks to establish a foundation of trust and security. Then ask the child whether they want to keep doing us time or do something else with you each day, like help you set up the classroom or assist with cooking dinner, having a lunch bunch, etc. 
Most children don't need it forever. Just be sure not to abruptly take it away when they start to do well. I already spent a lot of quality time with this child. How is this different? Remember, us time is about doing something that is highly engaging and interactive. Quality time watching movies or going places with a child is great, but us time is the best and most efficient way to get them exactly what their brain is craving on a daily basis. What about other caregivers? Can we trade off? Yes, but no more than two people should be in rotation. Two parents can trade off each day or two co-teachers. The important thing is that the child is doing us time with the adults that they spend the most time with and or the person that they're having the most difficult behaviors with. As you implement us time, you'll start to notice a decrease in the behaviors children engage in when they are craving interpersonal safety. This is because us time has given the child the confidence that they are unconditionally accepted, you will always be there for them, and they have control in their world and can make change for themselves. The best part? Research shows that relational interventions like us time are not only good for young people, they're also good for the adults involved. You'll notice your own sense of relief, peace, and healing as you strengthen your connections with the young people you care about.